So we have seen what is uh, Lamy's theorem and principle of transmissibility. Now I just move on to some uh, you know, basics. There is something called the system of forces, coplanar forces, resolution and composition of forces, as well as resultant force. Basically, suppose a force, force is applied to a body, a particle. I will take one particle like this. I will say a force is applied to a body. This force will. It may be in inclined direction or it may be in horizontal direction facing left, left hand side towards left side or it may be right hand side or it may be facing up directly or facing down or anywhere in inclined positions. So the analysis is made in terms of how many number of forces acting on a body and with that force what will be your solution? What is happening to the body when a number of forces acting on a body? If it is one force also some effect will be there. A cause is there, effort will be there. Force is applied, body will have to move. Moving with what direction? With what magnitude and what direction? Some value will be there and what direction moves is the question. Now what I say is something called resultant force. The resultant is what? When you have two values, either you add it up or you reduce one value from the other one. Finally you get an answer, it is called resultant. The resultant force is one, it is an addition or subtraction. It is a sum of one or two forces. I mean, more than one force I can say, is it a force? Or if it is a one force also, we have to indicate in what direction it is. It is in positive or negative direction. Or in up or down or towards right or left. It is called resultant force. So when I have number of forces, here force 1, force 2, 3, 4 and 5. The resultant force is based on it the direction of these forces and in what direction a force acts. Because a force is acting on a body and body has got some mass, that is a value, some magnitude of in values of Newton, 1 Newton, 5 Newton, 10 Newtons. And in what direction it moves. With that you will find out the resultant value. The resultant is 1 which gives the answer, that is the value. Right. Now, so for example, if I take coplanar, the main word it says coplanar, which means a single plane. If I consider how many planes we generally we define, I say this is x, this is y and z. I have x, y plane, okay, this x, y, y, z plane and z, x plane. The meaning is a body may act or a number of forces may act on a body in different planes. It may be acting in one plane, it may be acting in more than one plane or three planes also. This is a general idea. You have number of planes you can consider. So coplanar is the meaning when a number of forces acting on a single plane. For example, I consider this body is this particle. In this particle or a body, a force is acting. One force may be in this direction, one will be the other, other may be in another direction. Okay. So I Three forces are acting on a particle, but it lies in a single plane, which means in the xy plane, or yz plane, or zx plane. That becomes your coplanar forces. And if these forces acting in the same line, suppose, this is the body is like this. If the force is acting in the same line, it becomes collinear. It's called collinear force. If the line of action is same, it becomes collinear force. If the forces are acting in different direction, it will be the right hand side up and down, but it is in a single plane, it is called, it is a coplanar force. Because this thing, a, a body is acting in a single body, single point itself, but it is in a single plane, it is called coplanar force. Right. So, the purpose of studying this is to find out a resultant when number of forces are acting in a body, if it is one force, two force or three force or n number of forces acting in a body, how to find out a resultant is a question. For this basically there are number of laws, again like your Newton's first law, second law and third law, whatever you learned, there are number of laws being defined. First we will see what is called, called a parallelogram law. Parallelogram 
law. What is this parallelogram law? Parallelogram we have no. How how does a parallelogram look like? This will be like this. Okay. This is right. This is a parallelogram. I'm just drawing a rough sketch. Okay. Parallelogram. I'll take this one is point a P a force. Another force I'll take it as Q. Right. And this should contain some angle. True. Fine. Now, basing with the help of this parallelogram, a law is defined. In the sense, if you take a two sides of a parallelogram as a magnitude and direction, the resultant value, which is a diagonal one, which give will which will give a resultant, which is a summation of these two forces. If I take two coplanar forces, since the coplanar means acting in the same plane, which is in either side, adjacent sides of a parallelogram, the resultant will give a final resultant value. This is the parallelogram law. See, this is uh, these parallelogram law, next triangle law, then polygon law of forces. All these laws are to find out some means of finding out the resultant value. That is the purpose of studying this. Fine. Now, for this I can write, it is root of p square plus q square plus 2pq cos theta. This is a formula used to find out the resultant value for a parallelogram. This is your parallelogram normal equation. It is p square q square plus 2pq and cos of this angle between these two. Okay. This is one kind of law. A parallelogram law is to find out your resultant. How do you find the resultant? When P and Q are two forces acting in adjacent sides of the parallelogram, the resultant will be got from the diagonal which joins the starting point and the end point. It will just go like this, right? This is the meaning. Is it okay? For this particle, two forces are acting. It will be magnitude and direction and finally you will get an answer here. This is, all. This is one kind of law to find out the resultant when two forces of are acting on a body. Right? Next it goes to a triangle law. Triangular or triangle law. Okay? What is it again? Normally what do we draw a triangle? A triangle is one direction I can draw. Then I will draw the second direction. How can I draw the third, third direction? I will have to start here and come here. That is the rules, right? A triangle has three sides. I will say this is one side with force P, other side with force Q, and third side is one, I will close it. But I will draw the direction like this. That becomes your resultant. In a triangle of some other angle, would be your 180 degree totally. If two sides are of magnitude and direction, the resultant is the one which is taken in opposite sense. See? I start from this point, I go towards the right hand side, one arrow mark. From here, I am going to the second side of the triangle, one arrow mark. The third side is supposed to be close with the opposite arrow mark, is it not? But I am closing in the opposite sense. This is one law. In triangle law, you can find out resultant value, which means this is to be suppose some 1 Newton, some value P and some value Q. The resultant will be in this, which means you can add up or you can reduce it to get a resultant value. It's called triangle law, right? So your parallelogram law, resultant law. Then finally it goes for polygon law of forces. What is polygon? Polygon in the sense more than one, it becomes polygon. More than two, sorry. It's a rectangle, triangle, whatever it is. It's a polygon. Number of sides are more than two. It's polygon. No, if generally you take polygon, of any sides, I will start with point 1, I will go to point 2, point 3, point 4. Okay? Then I have to close it. You consider a polygon, you take this is force P, this is number force Q, this is force PQR. Okay? The resultant is again is in the opposite direction, which gives you a resultant value. See, I am not defining the statement given in the book. I am just telling the practical application of words that used. Everything, right from your uh, parallelogram, your triangle law, or your polygon law. If this is a force of P, some with some magnitude, that is a value. Q is some value, how does it do? 
then I'm sorry, I can take it as S because I need not come with the resultant R and your force S. Okay. So this resultant is the one which taken in opposite sense. That gives you a resultant value. The, the purpose of studying all this is to get a resultant value to keep the body in equilibrium. Basically, you have to understand a body should be kept in equilibrium for a best condition or efficiency. Right? For example, you consider a car. A car is moving with different speeds in different accelerations. When you change the gear from first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, whatever it is, it's moving. Equilibrium condition is the one with the available or designed values, the particular body has to move, which keeps every condition stable. That's called equilibrium. If the body, you know, if, if it, it's not, it's going, going out of the control, in the sense, the designed value is not attained properly, it starts vibrating. It becomes unstable equilibrium. So stable equilibrium or equilibrium with body is this, the number of forces acting on a body should come to an value, should you know accumulate or add it to an value to keep the body in equilibrium condition. That is the purpose you are studying all this, you know, type of loss and how to get a resultant value. This is right. Now, I will move on to this something called your resolution of forces. Resolution means, see generally, I will take one force in this positive direction. I will take the right hand side, R. Right? One force. I will take another force in left hand side, L. It is negative direction. You just make consideration as negative direction. This will be positive. One force up as positive. Okay, R, L, okay, then it is up. I will put, I'll put U. One force down as my negative direction. In the sense, in common, I will take a, a right hand side force as positive value, left hand side force as negative value, a force which is acting up, up no, to the up, uh, top is positive and acting down as negative. So for our, our convenience to understand, the sign convention, sign convention is, it is positive for upward force and negative for downward again positive for right hand side force right side and negative for left hand side force so this is how easily you can understand you take positive force it's positive I mean you know right hand side horizontal right hand side horizontal left hand side negative upward force positive downward force negative in this context I'll just say a small problem find the resultant of a force as a question a small question if the force is given like this, okay, this is 5 Newton here, 4 Newton here, 11 Newton here, and some 10 Newton here. For this, say 1, 2, 3 forces are acting, and I have to find the resultant value. How to find out now? I said right hand side is positive, so 5 Newton I write it positive. 4 Newton is acting. What's left hand side? I'll write minus 4. It's Newton value. And 11 Newton is acting again positive. I'll write plus. 10 Newton is acting again positive. Again 10. How to write? 5 minus 1 is 4 plus 11 plus 10. It becomes 21 plus 1, 22. 22 Newton is the value for my 4 number of forces acting in a body. Right? Like this. Any direction it is given, you can change it. You will take another two force, four forces. A body is here. One force acts like this. Other force like this. One is like this and one is like this. How will you write? Just which is all positive, you take it a positive value. Negative, you write a negative values and add it up. You get resultant force. This is one way of getting your answer of the resultant value. Or you can go for a triangle law, a polygon law, whatever it is. Now, the problem arises or you start you know analyzing a force which is in inclined direction whatever i spoke is for what an horizontal force right hand side left hand side horizontal upward force positive i mean upward and downward force when a force is inclined then what has to be done In the sense i consider this body okay for this body this one force is in this condition this force f1 other force may be horizontal as we read F2. Third force will be, okay, 
it is pulling towards out, it is F3. A fourth force I may have in direction like this. It's F3. It's very simple to solve because F4, F2 is a force going towards right hand side, I will take positive value. F3 is the one coming down, I will take negative value. Sorry. But what about force F1 and F4? This is an inclined force. These forces are having a some angle with respect to the horizontal. How do we resolve it? Means this force, inclined force should be resolved and made equal to either horizontal or vertical. What I mean to say? If it is a vertical force down, we will take negative direction minus. If it is opposite, mean to the upward, we will take positive easily. If it is towards horizontal, we will take positive. Neg I mean, uh, towards horizontal again, to the le left hand side, we will take negative. It is easier. But when the force is inclined like this, how do we solve it? It is a question. That is something called your resolution of forces. You are resolving. Resolving. Or resolution. Resolution of forces. Okay? That is very important issue because when you solve a problem, when you find a force in an inclined direction, you need to resolve it to horizontal and vertical, then you have to find out the resultant.